Hello, everyone. Today's lesson that we're going to be discussing for you all is called Hard Choices and Wisdom. And it tells us that this lesson allows students to learn and analyze the unique, the, the unique link between wisdom and leadership and how both are essential in delivering the sovereign message of God's plan for his people. And when we talk about wisdom and leadership, we're going to go ahead and define those two words. Wisdom is the soundness of an action or decision with regard to the application of experience, knowledge, and good judgment. And when you talk about leadership, leadership is an action or leading a group of people or an organization, guidance, direction, headship, directorship, and also the act of motivating a group of people to act towards achieving a common goal. And we can say for ourselves that um, there, are certain, um, there are certain examples of leadership as for yourselves. You know, if you're uh, vice president of your class, secretary, treasurer, um, you might be doing something within the youth ministry, you know, holding a leadership role. Or, you know, even at work, you might could be a crew member or something to that except that's a role of leadership. Even in your own household, um, being the older child, sometimes you can be in a role as far as leadership because your younger siblings look up to you. So that's what we're going to be talking about today is hard choices in leadership. And it tells us right here, have you ever been in a role that required difficult yet thoughtful leadership? Did you know to did you know need to devote time to study and carefully prepare? Consider the job of a parent. It's role that comes with little or no instructions, yet parents must consistently demonstrate wisdom and leadership. Describe the choice parents make must make as they care for and raise a child to adulthood. So in your spare time, I would like for you to make up a list um, of what are some of the roles that your parents play? Um, what are some of the things that they have to do, choices they have to make um, as far as raising you? And I can give you an example of one. And that example would be, we have to go to work um, to provide for you all. Um, that means housing, water, food, um, clothes, um, you know, all the needs that we need, electricity, those are some things that, um, you know, going to work that provides those things. So in your spare time, I would like for you to make a list of some of the choices that parents have to do um, to guide you in the right path um, from your child to your adulthood. Okay, in today's lesson, when it talks about hard choices and wisdom, we're coming from 2 King 22. Uh, verses 14 through 20, and that is the New Living Translation. Um, and today we're going to be talking about um, this lesson that focuses on the intersection of obedience and le leadership and how both share a strong link to God's plan for humanity. The scriptures reveal a brave and wise prophetess named Hoda. She changed a nation with her two most powerful gifts, a devout love for God and her trusted reputation of prophesying God's word. As we study Kings, 2 Kings 22, you will understand that Judah was in deep trouble with God. When the book of the law was found in the temple, young King Josiah only trusted Hoda to interpret the information therein. The king's choices seemed remarkably unusual given that there was a majority of male prophets, and during this time, the prophets were Jeremiah and Zephaniah. Those were the two prophets. And it see, I guess it kind of seemed a little weird because he didn't ask males, which what we can look at today because, as you notice today, we do have a female vice president. So women all, all you know, play an important role in, um, in situations. And then also we're going to talk about, nevertheless, she didn't disappoint. Hilda did not disappoint. Hoda did not disappoint. Hoda boldly interpreted God's fate upon Judah, clearly emphasizing her prophecy with these words, thus say the Lord. Hoda made it clear that she was only the deliverer of God's word. In short, God decreed that all Judah would be destroyed for their disobedience and idolatry. But because of King 
because of the king's desire and effort to honor God and keep his commandments, the destruction wouldn't happen until he was peacefully laid to rest. This was a dangerous task, but someone had to deliver God's truth. Hold us obedience, doubtfulness, and submissive compliance. Save the future of the nation. And so in this, we have um, King Josiah. King Josiah um, was king at the age of eight. He reigned for 31 years. Um, I could just think back at the age of eight. I don't know. I was probably still playing with baby dolls. And I'm sure, you know, you all were doing the same thing, not, you know, king of anything. But he was king at the age of eight. And Hilda, she was a prophetess. And a prophetess is a woman who speaks for God um, by divine inspiration. Also, a woman who foretells future events. A woman who is a spokesperson of doctrine, cause, or movement. And it's often referred to the wife or female companion of a prophet. So that's what she was. She um, would interpret... Um, things for she interpreted things for Josiah um when they came when he sent the people to her and so in today's lesson we're going to talk about God's prophetess which is Hoda God's condemnation and God's affirmation and you know we've already talked about Hoda um the two things that she did and um it also tells us that she lived in Jerusalem and what was called the second district, um, she was consulting on behalf of the King Josiah. Um, although it is only recorded a few times, God spoke to his people through prophetess, um, Miriam, Deborah, and Isaiah's wife. Those were the other ones that were prophets. I'll describe as prophetess. Um, Hoda accepted the book of the word of Yahweh and with his authority prophesied judgment against Jerusalem and Judah after Josiah's death. It is not noteworthy that although both Jeremiah and the other prophet were prophesying at the same time, it is she who was approached on this matter. So that meant when she was approached, she I'm sure she probably was nervous, and I'm pure sure that she probably um, might have doubted herself a little bit, but with her loving the Lord and being obedient and knowing how disobedience could get you in the wrong place with the Lord, I'm sure she went ahead and done what she was supposed to do. And so when we talk about condemnation, God's condemnation, um, condemnation is condemning someone to a punishment or the expression of a very strong disapproval. So... As we said earlier, um, Josiah, where he was, they, um, God had disapproved of their disobedience and their idolatry. Aldo 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 they had, he had really disapproved of that. And so even though that Josiah loved God, he had a tender heart, he loved God, God was not going to destroy anything until the passing of his death because of his pure heart. And it says that um, when they arrived at Holder's, at Holder's, she gave them a message from the Lord, Lord God of Israel to take back to Josiah. However, the message was not an encouraging one. As Josiah had anticipated, Holder's prophecy was that of judgment. Jerusalem and its inhabitants would taste evil days, even as the book of the law prescribed. The reason for this impending disaster was clear. The Lord God will not tolerate open violations of his law. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. And... 586 B.C., destruction did come to Judah when Babylonian brought Judah to its knees. So after Josiah passed away, then God did send destruction. And it says that Hoda told the king's men that God would bring disaster on the land and the people because they have forsaken him. God wants us to keep our eyes on him. So we won't fail pray, pray to the gods of the world. And that was a little G, the gods of the world. Like we talked about several times um, in class that, you know, the things that are so easily distract you, um, your cell phone, wanting to talk to your key, uh, friends all the time, um, 
just anything that doesn't line up with God will, um, being disobedient to your parents, um, not doing what they ask you to do, even at work, being, no disobe being disobedient to your supervisor, um, those are not good things and could, you know, cause you to be out of the will of God. And so after we shift our focus from God onto ourselves, other people and other things, let's make sure we turn to what the Lord wants to do as we want to be, because we don't want to be condemned like Judah. So it asks a question, what daily practices help you remember to worship God alone rather than modern idols of work, comfort, or success? So what daily practices do you do um, that, that help you remember to worship. Um, some things that I do is I constantly, constantly pray all the time. I just don't pray when I'm in trouble. You know, the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. That means at all times we should always pray. And, you know, that's one thing that will keep you in worship. So, um, I always remember to pray. I always remember God's word. Um, are you probably going to be able to quote where the scripture comes from? But if you study, God's word, then you'll be able to carry it in your heart. And then we talk about God's affirmation. Um, affirmation is the is a positive reminder or statement that can be used to encourage or motivate yourself or others. Um, that's like when we pray on Sunday mornings, you know, we utter up prayers of love, God. We love you, God. We thank you, God. We bless you, God. We lift up your holy name. That's affirmation telling God, you know, what he means to us, how much he, he means to us. And so in verses 18 through 20, it talks about, as if so often the case, God's prophecy of doom concludes with a glimmer of hope. The prophetess Hoda speaks another word to the messengers for the king. Josiah would experience God's mercy and grace because he humbled himself before the Lord and had a tender heart. Josiah humbled himself when he tore his clothes and wept over what he read in the book of the law. In God's tender mercies, he ind indicated through Hoda, King Josiah himself would die before these days of horror appear. Indeed, Josiah's death occurred in 609 BC, four years before Nebuchadnezzar attacked Jerusalem. Just one good leader can put off destruction and give the organization their lead, whether a family or department or church or country, a little bit more time to turn back to God. Um, and I just want to kind of elaborate on that. It says one good leader can put off destruction and give an organization their lead, whether a family, a department, a church or a country. And I want to elaborate on that a little bit because if you have a pure heart and you're doing things uh, with a pure heart with no motive, then things will flow right. Will there be ups and downs? Yes, there'll be ups and downs. Will you have that one that's probably in your group? Um, if you are a leader, that is probably in your group. That are probably you'll buck heads with, if that's a word. Y'all understand that. Or always end up having conflict with. Um, is that going to happen? Yes, it's going to happen. And a lot of times when we are in leadership and those things happen, that is for us to go seek God, ask God for guidance, ask God, what do we need to do? Um, not try to handle anything of our own because, as you know, our flesh is weak. Um, I'm sure you all have gotten to a place where you just feel like you're going to tell somebody off and I'm going to tell her off. She don't know who she messed with. Yes, we all um, struggle with our flesh, but in leadership, any kind of leadership role, you always have to keep your cool. Is everything always going to be right? No, it's not. Um, but you always have to keep your cool. And that means you're going to have to form a relationship with God. Ask God, um, God, what is, what is my will for my life? God, what do I need to be doing? God, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with that. God, can you help me in these areas that I'm struggling with? And so in the next steps, it tells us courage and fear are strongly linked for a reason. It takes courage to conquer our fears, especially when we are pushed to our limits. We will face challenges that seem impossible to win. God knows this and offers us divine encouragement. Hoda understood that her wisdom Hoda understood that her wisdom was appreciated, but her prophecy for 
Judah was risky, yet she was wise enough to realize that it was more important to be strong and of good courage for the Lord. Her God had spoken, and she believed that he would never leave nor forsake her. Despite her grave vulnerability, she obeyed God and saved the nation, which continued the lineage of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Therefore, we can be confident that the Lord has provided believers a path to go forward boldly. Steadfast faith, wisdom, and obedience are, two, are keys to accomplishing our purpose to fulfill God's plan. So she, being in leadership and being in that role, she, even though she probably didn't want to do it, probably knew that it was going to be a bad word, but she still done it because she knew the Lord, her God, was not going to forsake her for doing, for being obedient and doing what she wants. So I um, seen um, this thing that says it's five or six it's essential leadership skills. This is just five. Um, this is just the core of some skills. You know, there are many different styles, but in leadership, you should be able to communicate. You should have creativity. You should be, um, have motivation, positivity, and be able to give back feedback. So those are just five essential, um, skills in leadership. And like I said earlier, there are many different types and obedience. Obedience is um, to comply with an order request, law of submission to another authority, and act or insist on obeying. Um, you know, the Bible tells us it's better than obedience is better than sacrifice. Being obedient is better than having to sacrifice something later. So on today, um, I want you to just, in your spare time, whenever you... Um, have time. I want you to always to number one to jot down some things that parents um, have to do. Um, what what they do to lead you into a child to adulthood. That's number one. And number two, I want you to ask God, what is you know your will for my life, God? All of you, all of us are held accountable for our actions. And when we say accountable, it's we we are old enough to know right from wrong. You know when you're doing right. You know when you're doing wrong. Um, so that makes you accountable for what you do. So in your spare time, just ask God, what is my will for my life? If you don't know, but, and if you do know what your will is, uh, what God's will is for your life, I, I pray that you will work on those things that he has revealed to you, um, to make yourself a better you. Are we going to be perfect in this walk with Christ? No, we're not going to be perfect. Are we going to dot every I and cross every T? No, we're not. Um, Christianity is a daily process. Every day, we're not going to feel like we, we want to be saved today. It, that's why Christianity is not based upon feelings. But our, our goal should be to strive every day to be like Christ. And like I said again, are we going to be perfect? No, we're not going to be perfect. But we should be striving every day to be like Christ. So on today, I hope that you... Um, have learned something, whether it is um, wisdom, leadership, um, being obedient, the characteristics of your leadership skills. Um, I hope that you just, you know, take in heart and just pray and ask God what his will is for your life. And I pray that you have a blessed week and thank you for tuning in.